The SR Browser is an incredible time-saving tool. Let's learn about it. This video is sponsored by Micro Center. First up, I'm giving away free copies to my new class on modeling and texturing. To enter for a chance to win, comment your computer specs in the comments below, and comments will be chosen at random for winners. The Asset Browser is an awesome new tool that allows you to save assets into preset categories for ease of reuse. You can save objects, environments, shaders, animations, and more. You can also save a pose library, which I feel like isn't being talked about as much as some of these other features, so we'll make sure to cover that as well. And as a reminder, I have this free material pack, so now is a great time to download it and add it to your asset browser library for quick materials. Link in the description below. With all that being said, let's get started. So what we're going to do is run through the user interface of the asset browser first and then dive into the pose library as that's a bit more advanced. So you can access the asset browser up here by clicking asset browser. And you can see here that I already have some textures loaded in. These are all from that free texture pack I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And you can see then just go ahead and drag these into my scene and turn my little character here into kind of a golden little statue if I want. So let's look at how we can add and clear assets. So if we want to add an asset, we can select the asset over here in the outliner and you can right click it and hit mark as asset. And what it's going to do is it's going to render a very basic thumbnail view of your little character here. And then if you want to clear that asset, you can right click and clear the asset. Now I found that the most useful way to kind of create assets was to come over here and go to blender file and that put everything in these little collections. So I could look at all the objects in my scene. I could go ahead and right click them and mark asset there. I found that to be the easiest view to work with. But let's take a look at the interface over here. So currently over here, we have our current file and user libraries. This is where we can create various libraries and access them in other project files. So for example, I can create a MoGraph texture pack library, and then I can access these materials via my library menu up here in any project that I open in Blender. So that's where you can access your libraries. Look at how to create those in a moment. Up here, we have the thumbnail options, which allows us to change the size. I find small to be best, but you can go all the way up to large if you wanna get bigger previews of everything that you're looking at. Let's go ahead and change that back. Of course, up here, you can search, which is great. This is a nice little feature. If you click this little settings icon here, what you'll do is you'll click it and you can add tags to all of these so that you can search those tags, search those descriptions. So if you're creating a massive library for production of nature assets and things like that, you can get really detailed in here and make it really easy to kind of drag and drop elements into your scene. Or if you're in architectural visualization, this could be incredibly useful as well. Let's go ahead, toggle that off. And then one thing I really like is up here, we have the filter option. So let's go ahead and add our little shark here as an asset again to show how that works. What you can do is you can toggle all these off here. And if you see here, we can actually toggle on objects and only our loan shark will show up. And if we toggle him off and materials on, you will see here that only the materials appear. So this is a great way to kind of filter. Of course, you could also divide up your assets by libraries and have multiple libraries over here, you know, one for nature, one for city buildings and things like that. That'd be another way to keep it organized. Let's take a look at all the objects and things that we can add into the asset browser. So first up, we can add materials. Obviously, as you've seen so far, so for example, I made this faster render fog preset and now I can just drag and drop it onto my scenes to add a quick fast rendering fog without the hassle of creating the node setup every time. You can drag any type of object in here. Obviously, you've seen that we can drag mesh models in there, which is useful for dragging assets into your scene. For example, dragging nature assets or environmental or furniture assets in ArcViz but it's also great for creating light presets, camera presets, and more. You can see here, I've gone ahead and created a bunch of lighting presets, warm and cool area lights, which is pretty basic, but you can up it a notch in usefulness. Objects in the asset browser maintain their materials, so you can apply cookie cutters to your lights. Here you can see how I've added some textures to my light to shine off the camera, like shutters, leaves, and more, and I'm able to quickly drag them in. I'm considering giving away some of these for free, and then also maybe some on my Patreon. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Worlds can be placed in the asset browser and can store a good amount of data. And where I find the most useful is storing HDRIs. It's almost like saving preset lighting setups and just dragging them in and seeing what works. And I think the most powerful feature of the asset browser is its pose library, which we'll dive into in a moment, but let's cover the asset repositories first. 
And before we do that, let's hear from our sponsor. I was pretty excited when Micro Center contacted me as a sponsor. In fact, one of my first computers I made used for 3D was entirely built from parts from Micro Center, so you could say that I would not be here today if it was not for them. I choose to buy a lot of my parts from Micro Center because they constantly have great sales and good service. Get your holiday shopping done at Micro Center right now. Definitely go check them out if you want to build your own computer for Blender or buy a pre-made setup. If you're struggling to determine what type of PC you need, check out their community where members can help determine what's best for your price range. They're also giving away a 128 gigabyte USB and micro SD card to new customers, no purchase necessary. When you open a file, we have right now all and unassigned. All will show everything in all libraries that you have and everything in this scene. Unassigned will show you all the items that have been unassigned. Now, what I kind of found confusing was trying to figure out my file path. So if I go here to edit, preferences, and I go to file paths down here, you can see that there's a new asset libraries. And what you need to do is choose a folder here and that is where all your asset libraries will be stored. Now, once you've done that, you're ready to begin creating libraries. So I'm gonna go ahead and X out of that with my preferences saved. I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to create a library. So I'm going to call this one MoGraph Texture Pack. So when you create the little plus sign, it's gonna create a catalog by default. You can right click that and rename it. So I'm gonna call this MoGraph Texture Pack. And then I can begin assigning elements here. So let's go back to all or unassigned. And I can see that I have all the materials here and I have a world down here with an HDRI. I don't wanna save this in there. So what I'm going to do is come up here to my filter. I'm going to turn off worlds and everything else so that all I see are materials. And I'll go ahead, drag all these materials. And I can just go ahead and drag those over to the MoGraph texture pack. And we'll now see that all those are in there. You need to actually save this in your asset browser folder. So I had an asset browser folder here. I'm gonna go ahead, save that there. Now, if I go back to new, go to user library. Now you'll see that it kind of loads everything there that we have. Now, what I wanna point out is that when you go to drag and drop these into the scenes, there's a couple options up here. You can append and it'll create new files. You can append and reuse the data or you can link it. So if you link it, all changes will change across those materials. So if I go ahead and make this wood purple in the source file, then it will appear purple in this file. Appending will make its own version in here. And I think append reuse data for most cases is the best option. Now, if you're working on a production timeline, you may want to use link. Next up, let's take a look at the pose library, an incredibly powerful feature that allows you to save poses so that you can apply them to your character animation. It's really great because it lets you blend between poses and it also lets you apply to certain bone groups. So you could save facial animations and you could save hand poses and things like that. Let's take a look at how to utilize it. So first of all, you're going to need to enable an add-on. Under Edit Preferences, type Pose, and you need to enable Pose Library. Now this will work with inside the Asset Browser. There are a couple different ways you can access the information to create and apply poses. You can access them here in the Asset Browser window. Down here in the action editor, you can access it here on the right. And then in the viewport on the info panel, you can access it under the animation tab when you're in pose view. We're going to focus on the 3D view because that's where I find it easiest to use. So what we're going to do is go ahead and begin applying a pose. So when you create a pose asset, it will create a pose only for the bones you have selected. That's important and you'll see why in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press A to select everything. And then I'm gonna go ahead and deselect these hand bones here. And you'll see why in a second. Just wanna get rid of all the finger bones. Make sure I have that hand selected because I do want the hand position selected. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pose asset. And then you can rename that pose up here in the info panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in idle. Now what I'm going to do is create a new pose. So let's go ahead, take our character, and crouch them down here. We'll go ahead, grab the hands, move those down a bit. And I know this isn't a great action pose, but it'll help get the idea across. And now we're going to create a new pose asset. And I wanna make sure that I apply it to the same bones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this idle one, I'm gonna click select, and that will select all the bones from that pose. And I'm gonna create a pose asset here. And I'm gonna name this one crouch. Great. Now, when I click in between these two, you can see that it saved those poses and will automatically pose those. So you can go ahead and apply various poses that you may be using throughout your animation, and then you can quickly apply them and keyframe them this way. Another cool feature though, is that if I want to blend in between these two, I can actually click here and drag in between them. 
and I can stop at any point and that will become my pose. I'm gonna go ahead, reset the default. I can actually do it on the interactive blend here too. So I have crouch selected. If I hit interactive blend, you'll see that as I slide left and right, it works that way as well. Great, so I'm gonna go back to idle here and let's look at why we only selected certain bones. So you can actually store certain bone groups. So let's say that we want to create a bunch of various hand poses. So like a fist, a pointer, and idle, and all these other options. Let's go ahead and select these finger bones right now. Great, those are all selected. We're going to create this. And just to keep it organized, I'm going to call this F for finger, and then idle. And then let's go ahead and make some changes. Let's grab some of these and just bend them. Again, this isn't a great pose, but it'll help communicate the idea. Great. Now let's go ahead and reselect those same bones. So with F idle selected, let's hit select. And let's create a pose asset. And then let's call this one F bent. Great. Now I can choose between these. So what I can do is click crouched here. If I select all my bones and hit crouched. And then I click fingers bent. And you'll see that it'll bend those. And with that, you can begin using these pose libraries, not just to organize poses for your entire character, but your facial animation and your hands and kind of combine those elements. Another great feature is that you can actually pull poses from your animation. Let's take a look at that on one of my characters. So you can see here, I have my little owl animation. Let's look at how we can pull some poses from this animation, because there may be instances where you complete an animation like the way something looks and you want to save it as a pose. So go ahead and stop here on this kind of little happy little pose right here. So what I'm going to do is go into pose mode, select all of my bones, create a pose asset. And you can see here that the thumbnail is working as intended. That's how it usually works. And then what I'm going to do is just call this happy. And that's a quick way that you can kind of pull poses from your animation and store them from later. I'm super excited to use this in my short film to save tons of time. Comment below how you'll use it. I'm actually working on inputting some of my products into catalogs to make it easier to share my assets with you. Feel free to check out my assets on Patreon and Gumroad to add to your catalogs for ease of use, and I have a couple free assets on there as well, so make sure to check those out. As usual, I'm so grateful for you watching, and I love seeing what you create. Tag me in your creations and stay up to date on Instagram and Twitter at SouthernShoddy. Shoddy.